Good evening, and welcome to Saline High School for tonight's varsity basketball matchup between the Redford Union Panthers and your Saline Hornets. Once again, we ask that you please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. It's senior night in Zoline High, and the Hornets are ready to defend one last time for the 2020 season before heading into the district playoffs this upcoming Monday. Good evening, everybody. My name is Pat Canavan. Let's get broadcasting on ZolineLive.com. A little bit of boys, varsity basketball. All together, the Hornets taking on Redford Union Panthers this evening. Their great matchup last week, the Hornets were able to continue on their winning streak and looking with, towards the playoffs with heads held high. Early foul there called on Antoine Jones. Panthers, and speaking of the Panthers, let's talk about the starting five. Malik Terry at zero, Dewan Gibson at five, Braylon Allison at 11, Antoine Jones at 24, and Malik O'Neal at 35. The Panthers are coached by Randall Taylor. Altogether looking to put up a big, big stoppage here against the Hornets. Yaklich, one of the seniors tonight on senior day, being an all-time leader on the court for this Hornets squad and being an important figure 
his last few years for bringing this team to the next level. Hard drive inside, put up for the layup there, collects by Braylon Allison for the first opening points of this matchup tonight. Hard drive inside by Yakwitz, trying to match it, and he does. Collecting on a quick two. Griffin Yakwitz, like I said, being one of those key players for this Hornet offense, and altogether a great leader on the court. And next to him, you can not forget about Trevor Rico, number five for the Hornets. Another senior this evening. Basketball heritage, and altogether a fantastic player on the court for the Hornets. Dewan Gibson there, with the drive inside, able to collect on another two. With the Panthers, it's going to be Yakovich, contested by Gibson. Hard drive inside, goes to his left, looking for the options. Contested by Jones, but Yakovich is going to drive his way inside, uncontested, and collect on another two. Four to four as Hornets matching the Panthers. One for one on this route. Drive inside, it's going to be Gibson dishing to the outside to Jones. Big shot from the outside is going to go off the back of the iron there, coming from Allison. However, Hornets regaining possession. Solid pass inside, finds his way to Caldwell. Patience on the shot allows both Gibson and Jones to fly right on by. And Ferrari, oh, pardon me, not Caldwell. Anthony Ferrari at 22, the only non senior in the starting five, collecting on his first points of the evening. Allison dishes to the outside to O'Neal. O'Neal back up close to Jones, and Jones working his way, but contested by Ferrari. Able to put a shot over top of him. That's going to be one of the issues that the Horns have struggled, and it's one that they are definitely familiar with. In these last few years, they have been outsized on the court. Doesn't mean they can't shoot, however, and they prove that time and time again. Hard pass inside, finds his way to Ferrari, and then to the outside with Belskis. Hard drive inside is going to collect with the rebound going to number 11 there, Allison. Left all alone, number five for the Panthers. Big shot by Gibson, it's gonna go off the back of the iron, just a little bit off target. Hornets regaining possession. Yaklich with the hard drive inside, is gonna take it coast to coast, it's not gonna fall in his favor, however. Only one foul so far in this matchup as the Panthers with that early foul against Ferrari. And altogether, it was another big shot taken by Malik Terry from the close corner. Looking for the threes this evening. However, they're just not falling in anyone's favor. All action, but inside the paint so far, Arika with the short jumper off the side of the iron. Hard to take that shot, especially when you're undercover. Hard drive down the coast to coast of the court. You're looking at O'Neal as he's going to go up and out of bounds, and the Hornets are going to regain possession. O'Neal wanted a different call, but Hornets regaining possession. For Ward, taking it to the bench as out comes Derek Caldwell at 21 for the Hornets. Strong pass to Griffin Yaklich. He's going to go in the paint, put it up, tries for the layup. A little too much heat on it as it's going to roll right off the rim. Bounce pass inside and quick spin as it's going to be, shots going to be waved off for a travel. Number 21, Robert Thorpe came in to the play. He replaced Malik Terry, who's now on the bench for the Panthers. Thorpe trying to get the little spin in there on the way to his layup. A few too many steps, causing a travel. Ferrari dishes back over to Yakwich. This has been a Yakwich game so far. He's trying to find his access into the paint. Contested by Thorpe. Quick spin to the outside. Belskis for three. Off the side of the iron. Rebound collected there by Braylon and Allison. Pardon me at number 11. Quick drive inside and a sudden stop. Able to put Rico, or pardon me, Caldwell on his heels. Panthers looking for an option here. Dish goes to O'Neal on the outside. Who looks for the big shot, but it's going to be off the close side of the iron. Would have been a big three there to kind of 
give the Panthers the edge that they needed to try and take down this Hornet defense. However, Rico is going to take it right inside and collect on two for the Hornets. Pass inside from, or pardon me, pass from the top by Allison. Finds its way down low, but now we're going to look back to Allison. Opposed by Orico. Looks for the drive inside. Dishes it over to Ray Barrow at number three. That is Denim Ray Barrow. Big shot from Allison for three. Just off target once again. And nearly saved by Ray Barrow as he was able to get his way down towards the baseline. However, I believe his foot is out of, line, out of bounds there. 8-6, to 2-2 two two remaining on the clock. Hornets holding that lead. Trevor Rico, his time across the court, before sending it to Ferrari, and a quick move, able to put it up, trying for the layup. It's not going to hit the glass in quite the right spot, and rebound will be collected by the Panthers. Allison looking for the option. He finds it to the far side with Ray Barrow, before sending it back inside to Jones, and then back to Allison on the down low. Cut pass there. Looks like it was intended for it. Turner, however, Nearly taken away there by his own teammate and underneath the basket. Three out rebounded the Hornets three or four different times there. That was D'Antoine Jones at number 24 with the hard drive inside. Three, four rebounds against the Hornets before the whistle was blown. It looks like it's going to be the first foul of the evening going against the Hornets. And that's one of those situations where you have to understand if you want to maintain a strong defense, pardon me, folks, you need to have a strong rebound game. It's as true in, this, in basketball as it is in any other sport. You talk to a goalie in hockey about rebound control, they'll understand what you mean. Drive inside, that's going to be Allison trying to make his way into the paint before dishing out to Jones. Jones looking for the short two. Just a little too much heat on that one. Hornets regaining possession. We're going to see under a minute left in play at the moment. For the first quarter. We're seeing a repeat of the play that happened last quarter. Possession. Quick pass down low to Ferrari. Finds his way to Enrico. Enrico able to weave his way through that Panther defense. Turner. Back to Allison. Allison trying to find an option. Coach Taylor calling the shots before sending it down low to Ray Barrow and back to Allison. Hornet defense proving to be a little, a little tougher of an adversary than expected. Leaving very little room in the paint and shots are falling short as the Hornets regaining possession. That shot was taken there by D'Antoine Jones. Trevor Rico racing his way inside, bounce pass to Pickett. Pickett for three and collects on the first shot from beyond the arc in the first quarter. Big moment there for the Hornets, 13 to six. One quarter down, three to go. I think there were nearly three or four times there where you saw either a Hornet or a Panther take their shot from beyond the arc looking for those extra points. However, all of them seem to be just off target. Pickett able to reel one in just before the buzzer. Oh. Inbound pass will be taken from Dewan Gibson. And Redford Union has the starting five back out on the court. That's Terry sending it back up top to Jones. Jones to Allison. Allison contested there by Rico. 
Option down low to Gibson. O'Neal. And then back up to Jones. Terry on the far side. Pass inside, nearly cut short there by Ferrari, leaving an open opportunity. And then D'Antoine Jones tries to put it up, however, off the iron. Or it's not much luck on the other end of the court there as Ferrari with the hard drive inside. A little too much heat goes a little too high. That rebound's collected by the Panthers. Short fake of a shot there. Puts himself right down low to Jones and cannot convert yet again for the Panthers. Trevor Rico. Far corner looking for the drive inside. Passes the picket then back up top to Yakwich. Short pass to Rico. Drive inside underneath the basket. Puts it up for another two. There was a while there where the slim post referred to Trevor Rico and Griffin Yakwich as the thunder and lightning combo. Yakwich bringing the thunder. Big shots from beyond the arc, but then Rico always with that quick action underneath the rim. Daniels decides to send it far side to Terry before it gets sent right back to O'Neal. O'Neal with the jumper just inside. The arc collects on a two for the Panthers. Excuse me, folks. Arico pass inside, finds its way to Ferrari before the shot is taken right underneath by Arico once again. Third time we've seen that play by the Hornets. The shot put up before the Hornets are able to regain possession. Very fast paced game, back and forth. Caldwell puts it up for two and he collects, but he's going for the end one. That's going to be... Foul there was called on number 24, D'Antoine Jones, as he got a little got a little skin on that block trying to get up there. But Caldwell led to the stripe for two. That's going to be the second foul so far for Redford Union. What is a dangerous situation for the Panthers. Caldwell, one shot. Belskis on the court now. Collects on the end one opportunity. Caldwell being a valuable player we've seen really grow into his position on the court here this last season. Drive up to the arc there by O'Neill before dished out to Gibson. Far side to Terry. Terry looking for the option and finds it down low with O'Neill. O'Neill contested by Yaklich, looking for the option once again. Terry back to O'Neill. Short pass finds its way to Allison and then all the way back again across the arc. Looking for the long three there. It's going to go off the back of the iron, up and out of bounds. It's the Hornets regaining possession. Inbound coming from Derek Caldwell. Trevor Rico contested there by Malik Terry. Hard pressure down the court before the bounce pass finds its way to pick it. Looking at Yaklich, back just by midcourt. Hard drive inside the paint. Yaklich, familiar sight, puts it up for another two. Close drive there by O'Neal. It's going to go off the glass and not quite on target. Trying to keep it inbounds. He's going to deflect it off of Pickett. Denim Ray Barrow stepping in for the Panthers as out goes Malik Terry. Inbound pass from O'Neal. Finds its way to Allison. Allison looks for the three. 
just a bit short as it's going to catch the close side of the iron. Arico just across midcourt there. A little back and forth action before it finds its way to Arico, and Arico puts it up for the three, and there's going to be a little too much heat on that one. Many, many threes taken this evening so far, and only one is connected. That honor belongs to Jaden Pickett. Denim Ray Barrow before the pass down low to Malik O'Neal. O'Neal looking for the drive-in option before dishing it to the outside. Finds it, and that was a big shot there from Denim Ray Barrow, but it's going to catch the iron once again. Griffin Yakwich fakes the pass and drives it right inside and collects on the underneath the rim layup there. That was quite a play, honestly. It's one of those things up here you can see. He made the fake to go to his left, and that just threw off Jones just enough that he was able to work his way back underneath the net. Another foul there, and another turnover going towards the Panthers, and what's a dangerous situation. Hornets have not had many fouls called against them in this matchup so far. Inbound pass coming from Trevor Arico. Arico looking to really send it down court, but options close side to Griffin Yakwich. Yakwich. Just about under 3.30 to play here. And to extend that Hornet lead, 22 to 8. Arico with the drive and a quick step back before going close side to Dills. Belskis back to Arico. Driving inside the paint by Arico, trying to catch the Panther defense. And it's not falling in their favor. It's going to be a reach in there called in by Griffin Yakwich. Second team foul so far for the Hornets. And second for the Panthers, or pardon me, and two for the Panthers, I should say. Quick shot put up there is going to be rebounded by Nicholas Dills. A very fast-paced game, and that's going to be one of those questions we're going to have come halftime is which team will have the endurance to last the entire game. Both teams have a full bench, plenty of subs, so it'll be interesting to see how the rest of this plays out. Arico, so far side with Dills. Dills driving in the paint, tries to put it up, but he's going to get caught in about four Panther defenders. Quick pass from Allison finds its way up close and that's going to be called against I believe Trevor Rico. Feet weren't set. A little contact there between him and Denim Ray Barrow. The Celine pulling ahead in the fouls. O'Neal with the inbound pass, but before that's going to happen, we're going to have Jones check in here for Robert Thorpe at 21. Or pardon me, Jones at 24. Robert Thorpe at 21. And short pass finds its way to, Ant to, to Antoine Jones, collecting on two for the Panthers. Yakwich looking for a hole there. He's getting a little double team between O'Neal and Ray Barrow. Forcing the Hornets to change up their plan of attack here as the paint no longer seems as an open option. Caldwell finds a pass down low to Ferrari, and while the shot doesn't get up clean, that goes in favor of the Hornets as it'll be called on O'Neal. Or pardon me, D'Antoine Jones, his third foul so far. The man at 37 remaining in the first half. Ferrari collecting on his first from the strike. Roger, Robert Thorpe stepping in and Malik Cherry. As Jones took it to the bench after three. 
Ferrari, one for two from the strike. Four recollected there by the Hornets. Bounce pass from Yakwich down low to Caldwell. And back to Yakwich. It's quick motion by the Hornet offense, definitely making it difficult for the Panthers to keep up. However, opportunities like that, Panthers strike. Belskis is pinned down in the corner. Escaping with a bounce pass and going right back to Belskis before Caldwell gains possession. Just over a minute on the clock now remaining in the first half. Current score standing at 23 to 10. Hornets action into the paint once again. A short jumper shot put up there by Caldwell. Tries to swat it away towards Hornet favor. However, doesn't quite make it there with enough force. O'Neal. Gaining quick possession here and taking it right back down across the court. A little back and forth action between him, Terry, and Allison before Allison takes it right up. And it looks like Anthony Ferrari got a hand in there and it'll be foul called on Celine. Oh, it's Derek Caldwell who called the foul. Allison collecting on the first from the stripe. Two for two from Braylon Allison. A very, very much a key player for this Panther offense altogether. Just across midcourt, you got Caldwell with a quick handoff there to Yaklich. 30 seconds on the clock. Hornets. Gonna gain one last opportunity here before the buzzer. Panthers, we're gonna make a move. O'Neill checks the clock, tries to make a move on Yakwich. It's not going to work out in his favor, and Yakwich is going to break inside. Short pass finds its way to Ferrari, who puts it up for another two for the Hornets. Five points this evening so far for Anthony Ferrari. Five seconds on the clock now. Panthers looking for one big opportunity. Allison for three off the side of the iron. Belsky is going to grab it, launch it down the court, and it's going to be just to the left there. As final score, or pardon me, halftime score, I should say, is 25 for Celine and 12 for the Redford Union Panthers. Altogether, a fantastic game going back and forth for the Hornets senior night as you saw a lot of the starting four seniors, I should say, who came on the court played most of the first half. But with that said, folks, the twirlettes on the court, and we'll be back in just 10 minutes after the halftime.
Very solid start for the Hornets here as we roll right into the second half. It is a 25 to 12 lead. 16 minutes of ball left to be played, and you can see Belskis with the drive inside. Lexagon two for his opening points of the game for him. Now looking at both these teams, it's been quite a high intensity game back and forth. The possession time isn't very long. You see very quick action and very quick drives trying to make their way into the paint. Or, for instance, right here with the Panthers, you see a lot of perimeter play. So, that seems to be the main focus. And Hornets, all together having a little bit of a tough time underneath the basket and a little control. Like I said before, Hornets are definitely not unfamiliar with the idea that they're outsized on the court. They got some, they've always had that trouble, especially in these last two seasons of having guys who they're great on the perimeter, but underneath the rim, they get out-rebounded most of the time. So that's going to be definitely one of those things you want to keep track of for the remainder of this matchup. D'Antoine Jones collecting on that, too. We're still looking at the 27-14 to 14 difference here as the Hornets are slowing it down a little bit. But in my notes here, I, I kind of wrote down a few things that I've been noticing so far. And first off, for both teams, there have been so many shots taken from beyond the arc. They are looking for three points as the Hornets. They have a bit of a reputation for making a rain from beyond the arc. However, in tonight, Jaden Pickett is the only one to connect on a shot from beyond the arc. And altogether, that has been a very rough situation because both teams have taken plenty, plenty of shots. And that also could be related to the strong defense put up by the Hornets. The Hornets have done a fantastic job of keeping the Panthers out of the paint. The worst thing that you can have is a whole bunch of tall guys making their way right into the right underneath the basket and do whatever they want. But you've seen many possessions go down roar where the Redford Union Panthers just continue the pass action around the outside perimeter. On top of that, the Hornets are constantly pedaled to the metal. That's one great thing you can talk about this offense that is always Endure. Yakovich there drawing the foul there, going in favor of the Hornets. But it, go, it always endures for the Hornets is that you see this mentality of from tip off to buzzer, the game is just high intensity the entire time. And that is something incredibly, incredibly respectable, especially at high school play. You don't always see high schoolers show up in that manner of play on the court. For the Panthers, it's been a little back and forth game. A lot of their shots have not fallen in their favor, and when you have a call like that, it makes it a little difficult, too. Many times, Jones has made his way to the basket, and there were a few opportunities where they should have converted for a two. They should have made their way and collected on their offense. However, unfortunately, it just hasn't paid off in their favor this matchup. So that's something you like to see improve for this second half. You want to see the Panthers really step up their game. They want to take advantage of those opportunities that they have. And you also want to see the Hornets continue to lock down their defense. They've slowed the pace of the game, and they're really trying to make things work. And Griffin Yakovich, I mean, he's, he's playing a fantastic game there, but he's definitely making it a Hornet-favored scenario as it's going to be another personal foul for the Panthers. Thirty-two to fourteen. Trevor Rico is possession. The pass inside tries to find its way to Ferrari, and a little bit of miscommunication, not going in their favor. As we have an over and back, and the Hornets are going to lose the possession as the Panthers take over. But here's here's one of those things you got to pay attention to as well. Foul categories. And another one being assigned there is is going to. Ferrari. In, in terms of foul categories, the Hornets had four in the first half, 
and Redford Union only had three. Towards the end, the Hornets were getting a little bit of foul trouble, and the Panthers were able to close up that gap just a little bit. O'Neal falling a little short there on his first attempt from the stripe. And here's another situation where it's the, the tide has turned just, just a little bit, where the Hornets only have one foul so far, and we're only just under three minutes into this matchup. But Redford Union has four. So that's definitely something you want to see improve upon for the second half of play here. As Griffin Yak is going to race his way around and leave Caldwell for three and collects. Derek Caldwell joining the Jaden Pickett Club of threes this evening. O'Neill down low. The pass finds its way once again to Ray Barrow. And Ray Barrow tries to connect it there to Thorpe, but Yakovic is going to force a turnover. Nice bounce pass. Finds its way to Trevor Rico and a great play. Heavy pressure as timeout is called by timeout. Oh, pardon me. Redford, Redford Union calls that timeout. Caught up in that little of excitement. That, that little, I guess you would call it like a little shock and awe play that the Hornets have. They've run it multiple times during this setup, always with different players, but that yak, yak which to a Rico through traffic was definitely a crowd-pleasing play. Earlier, you always saw a, a Rico to Ferrari and back to a Rico again, play schematic, and that worked every single time, but you haven't seen it once so far in the second half, so I'm, I'm wondering what the play call is going to be in terms of how the Hornets are going to continue their pressure throughout this game. Now, if you really want more basketball action, I hate to tell you that the regular season is ending tonight for the Hornets, but it doesn't mean we're done. And in fact, the Hornets will be back playing a little postseason action on Monday as the Hornets are hosting the district playoff tournament, at least the first day of it. This upcoming Monday, the 9th, will be a doubleheader at 5.30, followed by a one, or doubleheader 5.30, and then 7 following. 5.30 is going to be a Celine versus Huron. That'll be a good matchup as Huron being a very, very strong team in the SEC Red. On the other side of the bracket, though, Lincoln looks to defend their state title, and they're starting off their first play, their first game in the playoff run. And it'll be interesting to see how they take on the postseason. In terms of, there's a big shot coming from Bels Belskis there. Sorry about that little absent pause there. Trying to check up on what's going on in the girls' district tournament because that is currently going on at this moment. As for Celine, they're taking on looking rail splitters and trying to find updates there after one. Pardon me, after three, the girls basketball up 48. 16. That was, oh, pardon me, this was all yesterday's score updates as the girls basketball was able to defeat Lincoln 60 to 17. Hornets looking to play the district title on Friday night at 7 p.m., where they're going to take on the winner of Huron and Pioneer. Sorry about that, a little misinformation on my side. But altogether, it's one of those options where the Hornets. Especially the girls varsity basketball team are a very, very strong team this year. One of the strongest I've seen in a very long time. And it, it's incredibly exciting because I checked the other day, and according to Max Preps, uh, they won one of the, uh, I guess you could say, websites, and I don't know if they're affiliated with MHSAA or not, but they're one of those uh, ranking sites that puts down the records and rankings, and they have labeled... Celine Varsity, or Girls Varsity Basketball, as seventh in the state. 
which is always a great thing to see because this team or the girls team has worked so hard and it's one of those situations you really want to see them improve and go all the way. However, there are two other oh, big block there put up by Denim Ray Barrow. However, it's going to go in favor of the Hornets in the end as Yaklich heading to the stripe. Like I was saying, the Hornets aren't the only SEC red team, or SEC team, I should say, in the top 25 rankings. In fact, Huron just ahead of them sitting at four, according to Max Prep. And then just behind them at 15 is Bedford. And so he will play here on, or play Pioneer, the winning of this match, winner of this matchup this Friday. And that'll be an interesting, interesting scenario to see how it goes down for the Hornets. But until then, we still got a little bit of guys basketball to take care of as Hornets leading the way at 41 to 16. 228 on the clock. Bounce pass inside, finds his way to Terry in a hard, hard drive by the Panthers. Up and out of bounds, however, as another little unfortunate turnover goes in favor of the Hornets this time. Inbound pass to come from Pickett. And it'll find its way to Yaklich. All right, drive down court as it's going to be a press by Terry the entire time. A little flashback to the first half where neither the Hornets nor the Panthers let up any pressure to either team. Tough pass recovered there by Rico. And the drive inside as he's going to lose possession. And Rico running a little slow. That looks to be recovered fine. Trevor Rico on the far side receives the inbound pass. The Belskis now. Belskis to drive inside the paint before he decides to put it on for himself with a short jumper and collects on another two. Panthers there rush up to about midcourt and take their time to slow it down. You got about a minute 30 on the clock. You've only put 18 on the board, so this is an opportunity where you got to take your shots. Take them wisely, because if you can do that, put another few points on the board. Start making up some ground here for the fourth quarter. Short jumper there, put up, nothing but net there. By Janai Turner at number two. Arico with the hard drive inside before dished over to Belskis. Belskis quickly guarded there by Mark Major at number four and a big shot from Arico looking for his three. It's going to dance a little, but it's not going to fall in his favor. And shooting foul is going to be called on Pickett there as it will be Turner heading to the stripe for two. And here's that opportunity I was talking about. We're down at 16 points not too long ago. It's 43 to 20. It's a 23 point difference. But now you're at the stripe. You have a chance to make it 18. And play your game right. You still have eight more minutes of basketball to play. And honestly, 20 points in eight minutes, a lot crazier things have happened. And that's when it's going to be up to the Hornets to really put up their best defense and see how they can withstand throughout the remainder of this matchup. We're seeing a quick sub here where in comes, go, in comes Dills Holmberg Ferrari for the Hornets. And out goes most of the senior starters. I have a feeling we'll see them one more time before this matchup is over. Derek Colo with the pass down low to Nick Dills before sent up top to Nathan Holmberg. Pick it for three from well beyond the arc. It's just going to catch the front of the iron, however. That was a big time shot. Janai Turner set the pass down low and it's gonna find his way right back to him. 10 seconds on the clock. Third quarter about to expire. Panthers looking for a break here and an opportunity. It's gonna be the race inside and a shot put up and shooting foul is gonna be called on. Or going in favor to say of Mark Major. And it'll be called on Anthony Ferrari. Pardon me, Nathan Holmberg. I keep recalling these fouls and I keep getting them wrong. 
Two shots from the stripe as Major takes the first and collects. Second attempt here for the Panthers from the stripe. One for two coming from Major. A strong shot as the ball got away. And it's going to connect on the net as a collective ah finds its way through the stadium here. Score stands at 43 for the Hornets and 22 for the Panthers. Like I was saying, if you're bummed out that there's only one quarter of basketball remaining, don't you worry because we'll be back this Monday. A little playoff coverage as Celine is looking to host, or is hosting, I should say, the district playoffs in the first day of that, of course. They're originally going to host the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but however, Wednesday and Friday matchups have been relocated to the Convocation Center at Eastern Michigan. The Monday Night Games are going to be at 5.30 and 7 p.m. You can catch it on CelineLive.com. Celine playing at 5.30 with the Celine fans. Antoine Jones, 24, at number 24, I should say, stepping in here for Redford Union. An inbound pass finds its way to Allison before sent to the far side with Turner. Turner, looking for options, is going to find it once again with Allison. Allison for three. A little dance, but it doesn't fall in their favor, unfortunately. And short pass finds its way to Holmberg before going back to Ferrari. Ferrari finds Pickett on the far side. Pickett, looking to be a new leader next year for the Hornets squad. Drives it up and is going to put it off high off the glass as the Panthers are going to regain possession. Strong pass finds its way down the court. And Turner now with possession. Over to Allison. Allison, contested by Dills, finds a nice short pass over to Jones before back to Turner at the front. Pickett's going to get a hand on it and knock it into the stands. Inbound pass finds his way to O'Neal. O'Neal's going to put that shot up and collect on a two there for the Redford Union. Derek Caldwell racing right, right across midcourt, contested there by number 11, Braylon Johnson, before dishing it away. And Dills can find his way back to Caldwell and back to him once again. Hornets now having a little trouble to drive inside the paint. That'll be a travel called on Jaden Pickett there. A little quick step action trying to fake out his defender. Allison passed to the far side with Turner. Turner looking for an option. Finds it back with Allison. Hard drive inside and gets a little airborne on that shot. However, it's going to Oh, high off the glass before it's picked up by Jaden Pickett. Nicholas Dills on the far side with a quick bounce pass back and forth between him and Ferrari. Ferrari's the one who puts it up and collects his own rebound. Pickett now up front, down low to Holmberg for three. Off the back of the iron. Big collective sigh there from the student section. And a foul is going to be called on, I believe, Holmberg there as Major takes a tumble. Inbound pass finding its way here to be coming from Dewan Gibson. Gibson to Allison. Allison contested by Dills before sending it down low to Terry. Terry to O'Neal. O'Neal in foul trouble early in the first half, so now he's back in the game and he's going to draw the shooting foul in favor of the Panthers. 
5.47 on the clock, and O'Neill heading to the strike. Two opportunities. Third personal foul for Nathan Holmberg there. And a timeout looks like it's going to be called by the Panthers. Quick 30-second timeout here as current score standing at 43 for Celine, 24 for the Hornets. Foul totals as we're looking in the second half alone. Celine wrapping them up real quick there and catching up to Redford Union. Five apiece, in fact. Ethan Holmberg drawing three of them in this quick action. So he's staying in the he's staying on the court as of right now, but I'll interested to see what will happen and if Coach Fosdick will make the move to put the seniors back in for the last few minutes of regular season play. Shot up by O'Neill, collects on the second. Inbound pass finds his way to pick it and it looks like Heavy pressure by the Panthers is going to try and force a turnover to go in their favor. Pardon me, but the inbound pass coming from Dills. Caldwell to pick it on the far side. Pressure by Pan the Panthers making it difficult for the Hornets to get across midcourt, but they do. Dills options over to the far side with Pickett and a down low to Caldwell. Caldwell contested there by Major. A little dished over to Dills, and Dills is going to try and work his way around from Allison, but he finds Ferrari who puts it up for a quick two. Very solid defense there by the Panthers. They able to shut down a little bit of Hornet offense, but it's not enough. Hard drive inside by Allison. He's going to put the shot up, and he's going to collect on a high arcing two for that layup there. A little bit of contact between him and the Hornet defender, but no foul is called. Ferrari with the long pass finds his way to Holmberg. In the checking area, you got a full rotation coming out and big block taken there by Terry. Big substitution coming in as Reichard, Arico, Belskis, Jaklic, and Verwart step in. Last minute of play. The last four and a half minutes. Close to five. Inbound pass going to find its way from Yaklich. That's Luke Reichert at 33. It's a player you don't see very often on the court, and I think that's one of those big move opportunities by Coach Fosnick to let him know, hey, your number's about to be called, my man. Let's, let's, let's get some time on the court. Because next season, next season is going to be a big season. Hard race down the court there, slowed down by Braylon Allison and collects on another two. That's what I was talking about earlier. You saw in the first half a whole bunch of opportunities by O'Neill, by Allison, and other Panther players that they just rushed it a little too much and they lost the scoring opportunity. And I dare say there were four or five opportunities, and this this could be a this could be a much closer game if. Redford Union just took their time a little bit and converted on their opportunities. It's good to see a little change happening in the second half. That's always what you want to see from these, these teams out here. Hornets far from being problem free. And the Panthers are exactly the same. So it's that situation of, okay, it may be the last game of the regular season for the Hornets. But that doesn't mean you stop learning. You get on the court and you work hard and you improve your game every opportunity that you can. Dewan Gibson drawing his second personal foul there. It's Belskis at the stripe. One for two from the strike there by Belskis. 
Allison with the quick feet there, trying to ride his way inside the paint, but however, unable to put it up. And O'Neal, one, two shots by O'Neal. And there's something the Hornets need to work on as well. They're rebounding underneath the rim as O'Neal has won the rebound contest nearly every single time. And there you go, three. Puts it up for three. However, O'Neal unable to convert on that one opportunity there. And Belskis is going to take it right back down the court as he puts his shot up. And foul is going to be called. Belskis going back to the stripe for two. And D'Antoine Jones, number 24. I was part of me, I was calling him O'Neal before, but Jones collects his fifth personal foul. And that'll be the game for him. Robert Thorpe taking his place on the court. Belskis collecting on the first. Two for two from the stripe in the second opportunity there by Tyler Belskis. Quick pass outside. It's going to be Jones with a hard drive in. Or pardon me, Turner with a hard drive in. It's going to go up and out of bounds. Griffin Yakwich going to be called for the foul there. A second personal on the team sixth overall in the second half as to the stripe. Goes Janai Turner. Turner, second opportunity. Collects one for two from the strike. 317 on the clock. Current score stands at 48 to 30. Panthers making up a little ground here. Or we go, drive inside, trying for the option. Tests the boundaries there, but then falls back and is going to bounce pass over to Yakwich. Yakwich going to take it in all the way and put it up against the glass. Rebound collected, however, by Thorpe. Long pass trying to find its way forward to Gibson. It's picked up by Rico. And Rico riding the sideline all the way down. And travel will be called on Trevor Rico. Raylan Ellis with the drive inside and shots to be waved off. It'll be a one and one as an on the floor foul as the shot was called off and not a shooting foul for the Panthers. Both teams are now in the bonus as well. Connects on the first there. Mark Major stepping in for the Panthers. And going two for two by Major. Griffin Yakovich making his way back across the court looking for any opportunity here, 2.30 on the clock. We've got three Hornets ready to check in here for a big substitution for Celine. And first things first, Ethan Holmberg taking to the court. As out goes Tyler Belskis. Belskis being a reliable player on the court all the time and a great tall guy to make it rain threes occasionally. Yakwich taking a step out, being a traditional leader on the court, but not going out alone as with him goes Trevor Arico. Arico, all-star player, that thunder and lightning combo by Yakwich and Arico. Taking their seat on the bench for the regular season. Big shot by Allison looking for that three. It's going to be off the, off the close side of the iron to him. 
And foul's gonna be called as... Called on Turner, in fact. And Hornets are in the bonus, so they will head for the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Eli Tracy. Collects on his first. On the bench, the student's section erupts. Tracy's the guy you don't see on the, on the court very much at all. One for two for him to strike. And Tracy collecting his first points of the evening so far. David Collin at number one in for the Panthers as well. Collin, first playing minute so far. Hard drive inside by Den Ray Barrows. Can be tossed around before Collin regains possession. And Reichard nearly with the breakaway opportunity there and drive inside. And foul is going to be called on Dills as he went up to contest Janai Turner there. Collects there from Turner as that and one opportunity paid off for the Panthers. And now we're seeing a unique opportunity. Not quite a 10 point game, but it could be very quickly. And the Hornets to make sure they're on their game for the last minute and a half here. Big shot from the outside, off the far, of the iron, far side of the iron from Eli Trees and goes for it again off the back of the iron. Nearly collecting his own rebound as a long pass finds his way down the court. And layup put up there and collected by Mark Major. The student section calls for, for Sullivan Schnorr to come in. The guy, you, another guy you don't see taking much time on the court. Sullivan Schnorr. You know, I don't think I've seen that very often where you have the student section calling for the sub. And he kind of had this moment with Coach Fosdick where he, he heard it, he acknowledged it, and he's like, ah, oh, why not? A minute left to play. Let's get, it, let's get some playing time for the rest of the bench. Dill's trying to maintain. He's going to go up and out of bounds. He's going to go back in Panther possession. A minute to play. 12-point game. 12 points is, is a decent enough of a lead, but you have to understand with a minute to play and more opportunities for the Panthers at the stripe like that, putting the Selene in a little bit of foul trouble, this, this game could get a lot closer than anyone expected. It's going to be Mark Major collecting on the first. Two for two by Mark Major, and now it's a 10 point game. Inbound pass finds way to Nick Dills. Solid pass to Verwart, then back over to Trees, and then it's going to be called for a foul there on Trees. Possession going right back to the Panthers. 54 seconds on the clock, 10 point game. Hornets are up. That's Terry before dishing it to the far side. Terry trying to drive it in. Big three coming from the Panthers, and they find it. That was Denim Ray Barrow collecting on a three. Seven-point game, 40 seconds on the clock. Heavy pressure going on Dills. Then sending it down low to Holmberg. Holmberg contested up front by Major. And foul's going to be called on Major there for that pressure on Holmberg. Timeout called by Redford Union there. 34.8 seconds on the clock. We're looking at a seven point game. Holmberg will head to the strike for a one and one opportunity. 
it's a tough, tough gap to make up here for Redford Union. Both teams are in the bonus. It's 49 to 42, seven points. There are, there are plenty of different combinations that this can be pulled off, and honestly, I've seen far crazier in the last minute of basketball and, and elsewhere. But it'll be interesting to see the Hornets be able to hold on for this last half a minute. But if you're worried that this is the end of basketball season and you just need a little more basketball in your schedule, don't you worry. Playoffs start on Monday. We'll, in fact, be covering the first day of the district playoff bracket for the Hornets. We'll take on Huron in the game at 5.30. Stay for an extra treat at 7. Lincoln, the defending state champions, will be playing at 7. That's a game you want to see no matter the opponent. Holmberg, one and one opportunity. Off the back of the iron has been knocked up and out of bounds, and it's going in Panther favor. Quick sub as Ferrari stepping in and Verward stepping out. All right, drive down the court. It's going to be Allison. Down to, t to Turner. Pardon me. Back to Allison. Burning time. Allison puts it up for the two. It's going to go off the iron. Rebound collected by Dills. No foul force. More time is being burnt off. And there's the, there's the whistle. As it's going to be a timeout, in fact. 30 second timeout, 20 seconds on the clock. Still a seven point game, but as every second that melts away, victory becomes more and more of a reality. The Hornets. Inbound pass is going to come from Nick Dills. It's going to find its way to Derek Caldwell. Back to Dills and back to Caldwell. A little back and forth action before whistle is going to be blown as Turner is going to force a foul there. And Caldwell will head to the stripe for one and one. Double bonus for Derek Caldwell as he will head for for two shots this time. Collects on the first. It's going to be off the front of the iron there for a second shot, one and two. Back to an eight-point game. Big shot for three. He's going to be collected and rebounded by Pickett and knocked up and out of his hands as it's going back in hard of favor. Five seconds on the clock. It's about an eight-point game and Unfortunately for Redford Union, that'll be all she wrote. Unfortunately, eight points in five seconds. There's a few combinations that can make it work. Five seconds is stretching it. Take it, collects on the first, making it back to a nine point game. And the second one doesn't fall in his favor, but the big shot put up for the three there by Turner. He's going to go back off the iron, and there is the buzzer. Final score standing this evening for senior night. Celine 51, Edford Union 42. Don't forget, folks, if you want a little more Hornet basketball action, we have one more Celine basketball game program for you. This Monday will be the first round of the district playoffs, and you can catch it with Celine playing at 5.30 as they take on Huron. And as always, folks, my name is Pat Canavan. Thanks for tuning in. Good night.